What's good, Sixers fans? Y'all are tuning to another dose of Chalk It Up, where no matter if we win or if we lose, we just got to charge it to the game. So, a lot has changed for the Philadelphia 76ers as of late. We already know we got the new head coach in Doc Rivers. But, on top of that, we just got a new GM, y'all. Daryl Morey, the well-respected Daryl Morey, the well-accomplished Daryl Morey. The only thing he's missing from his resume is a championship. So, can he get that in Philly? We all know what he's capable of. We all know what he's done. But before we get into that, I want to also introduce our other new additions to the staff. We got Sam Cassell, used to be with the LA Clippers. We got David Yeager, used to be with the Memphis Grizzlies and the uh, Sacramento Kings. We have Dan Burke, used to be with the Pacers. He was talking trash about MB, I think, a year or so ago, but nonetheless, he's on our squad now, and we have him, and, you know, we're starting to build that staff. We're starting to build a respectable staff, first and foremost, and I think that's so important when it comes to the NBA. Um, that attracts players, that, uh, that attracts uh, free agents, that attracts um, high-profile free agents at that, but, you know, it just, it just establishes a winning culture, so... Having Daryl Morey, we all know what he did with the Houston Rockets. He was there for about, I think, 13 years or so. And he was accomplished. He was able to bring in James Harden, obviously. He was able to bring in CP3, uh, Russell Westbrook. You know, and he came close to winning the championship. They, the Rockets came close. But once CP3 pulled his hamstring, it was one of those things where it was out of his control. And James Harden had to, had to step up. And unfortunately, James Harden couldn't do it. But... Nonetheless, Daryl Morey was able to do a lot, and he's known for being one of the highest wheelers and dealers in the uh, NBA. So, what does that mean for the Philadelphia 76ers? What does that mean for Elton Brand? What does that mean for Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons? What does that mean for all those key guys? Because Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons are supposed to be the future, but we've seen them play together for quite some time, and do we really know... It, is that the best they can do? Do we really? Is there really more to learn from it? I believe there is. I believe we need to see them play at least one year un under Doc Rivers to see what those two can potentially look like, what, what, how far they can potentially go. Because we know, we know how good they are individually. We need to maximize their talent collectively. But Elton Brand, Elton Brand was making the decisions. But now that Daryl Morey's there, Elton Brand's not going to... Daryl Morey's going to supersede Elton Brand's word, essentially. Elton Brand. You were there for quite some time. You made moves you learned. You were there for learning. And some believe that you were just the face and there were others behind you really making the decisions when it comes to the roster and so on and so forth. But Daryl Morey's there. And so Daryl Morey, I believe, he would not put himself in a situation where he wouldn't be able to make decisions, f flat and simple. Um, rumor was he potentially wanted to actually spend more time with his family, but he decided to come to the Sixers. Doc Rivers was a similar story. He thought he was going to lay low for a little bit, decided to come to the Sixers. So people see the potential in the Sixers organization. People see the potential in the Sixers roster. Most importantly, Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons. And, you know, the rumors are already starting to fly when it comes to Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid as a pair. People are saying trade one of them already. Already people are saying that just because they know how aggressive Daryl Morey is, you know, when it comes to free agents and trading. But I just don't think you should jump the gun like that with either of those players. I, I personally don't think so. Uh, Joel Embiid, high potential. Ben Simmons, extremely high potential. But the thing is, they're both in their own way. Ben Simmons needs to shoot more. Joel Embiid needs to get his body right and get his mentality right. It's too it's too often where Joel Embiid is choosing when he wants to play hard based on who he's playing against. Come on now, we can't have that. That's not thorough. That's not that's not sturdy. That, that ain't never been sturdy. And then Ben Simmons, he shows you that he has potential to make a three-point shot, but in the middle of a game, he rarely shoots it, if ever at all. We, I think we saw him shoot a three-pointer one time in like the first 
few games of the season, and that was it. We never see it. And then, you know, he went down in the bubble, so he's coming off an injury. It's like we need these guys to really take take control of their skill set and maximize it to the fullest ability because we all know what they're capable of. Ben Simmons, 6'10", can handle the ball like a point guard. You know what I'm saying? Defense, defense is bar none, all, 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 all NBA defense. You know what I'm saying? So it's they had they had the potential. Joel B, arguably the best big man in the game. We all know Giannis can't do nothing with him. We all know that. We all know that. So why why we need to see this team be maximized? And I think the Sixers the, as an organization is finally starting to understand. Okay, we need to really we need to really make a real decision. We need to really put this team first. It was too often in the past we felt like the Sixers were just doing just enough to get by. But no, these hires show they're really trying to go for it. And I respect it because Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons are young. And you need to maximize that while you have it. You need to utilize it while you have it. It's just that simple, man. But the first course of action that needs to happen since Dale Morey is there, we need to unload some heavy contracts. We all know the roster from top to bottom is in a bad situation cap-wise. And the main contracts that really are killing us are the Al Horford and the Tobias Harris contract. Now, I like Tobias Harris. I like him. I'm going to be honest. But Tobias Harris hasn't really lived up to his contract. Let's keep it real. He only averaged about 19.6 points a game this season. Not even 20. Not even 20. And he's making all that money. I don't count the dollars. That ain't in my business, but I know he's making a lot of it. He's making a lot of it. And we gave him that, thinking he was going to be a maybe a 25-point-per-game score, at least. That kind of money, you got you to put up 25 points per game, at least, in my opinion. No, you you wasn't even that. And then Al Horford, dog, when you're on the court, you are literally a liability for everybody. No offense. I'm not, take, I'm not coming at your talent, my brother, but I think you just not meant for this roster. That's all. That's all. This roster, I don't think is out. This this roster isn't conducive to your skill set. The offense is clunky when you know when you're on the court with Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid. The offense just go, goes into a deadlock. Can't score. Too slow. So we got to move on from the Al Horford contract. That's the biggest thing. We got to find someone who's willing to take that contract. I don't care if it's the New York Knicks. We all know that's the place where contractors go to die. Uh, but Al Horford's contract needs to be the main one to get off. And I think Daryl Morey is the, is the one to do it. Because I think if it was possible for Elton Brand, they wouldn't have had to bring in Daryl Morey. Darryl Morey. So Daryl Morey, I think he's going to be the one to get rid of that Al Horford contract. And who knows what he does with Tobias Harris. It's not really Doc Rivers' call. We all know Tobias Harris had his best, his best, his best years under Doc Rivers in L.A. as a Clipper. But... Really? Tobias Harris hasn't lived up to it. Who knows what Darren Morey can package Tobias Harris and Al Horford to another team? Who knows what he can get for it? Who knows? That's a nice package. A big man and uh, a wing. Who knows what he can get for that? But it got to be a team that's willing to take on the contracts. This team got to step it up when it comes to play. And I think Doc Rivers is the one to do that with David Yeager, uh, you know, Sam Cassell, Dan Burke. You know what I'm saying? All those, All those guys, man. I think it's very possible. I think it's very possible. And Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid, y'all gotta, y'all gotta, y'all, y'all gotta make it work. And if not, I wouldn't move on from Ben Simmons. That's the guy I would keep. That's the guy I would keep. I put, I would prefer Ben Simmons. Even if he can't shoot, you fill him up with shooters. He can just, he can just run a floor so well, and he plays defense so well. And I think he's a healthier, a healthier body than Joel Embiid. And I, 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 I can't bet on Joel Embiid, you know, one, two in the game. I can't bet on his, 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 his weight. I can't bet on his, I can't bet on his health. Simmons, he rarely ever gets hurt. Simmons, he can do so much. Basketball IQ is crazy. Defense is crazy. He could run the, run the fast break insane. Just fill him up with shooters and ball handlers. And he can do his thing. Even if he can't shoot, he can do everything else amazing. But I'm going to leave it at that, y'all. My name is Tone DeShields the second. Y'all was tuned in to chalk it up when no matter if we win or if we lose, we just got to charge it to the game. One love, y'all. Let's go Sixers.